Good morning, folks. Tons of stories coming at you today with big hits in climate, cosmology, and galactic astrophysics. We're going to start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day remaining without sunspots. Southern coronal hole visible incoming, northern outgoing coronal hole turning away. Intensified solar wind from that northern opening impacted the Earth's magnetosphere yesterday. As you can see, the density rises first in orange, and then the speed and plasma temperature rise in purple and green afterwards. Now, in addition to noting the staggered impact, indicating it was a coronal hole stream, on the left, you see that the speed never cracked 500 kilometers per second. This stream is weak, barely nudging the KP index of the geomagnetic field. We reported the crazy hailstorm in Germany from earlier this week. Here we find it got worse as it spread to other countries. This is definitively dangerous hail. These could break bones or worse. Now let's go to the news stories and start with something pretty. ESO has released some of their favorite animations all in one place. Frustrating they left out the Sun's version of ANOVA, but hey, not bad in all reality. And in addition to covering nearly every story included in that video, we have reused many of the animations again to help visualize other topics and stories, as well as to tie together the stories that relate back to others over the years. Bigger picture from the past is helpful. We'll see that especially true here shortly. We're on to the climate. Now take in this 125 year temperature chart, see the color, get a feel for the distribution. And now here is the minimum temps over that same time. When we say global warming has been at night, when we say that for years on end the minima temps are where the surge is found, not in the daily maximums, this is NOAA saying the same at climate.gov. They also decided to throw in the chart for the last 30 years when pollution peaked and the planet should have been warming the most. Should, according to mathematical models. And those models also suggest we need to engineer the climate. They are just as wrong on that one and I'll save you the trouble. We shouldn't do either one of these. The better climate story out of nature this week hits the game breaker, the aerosol particles. These are supposed to warm the earth, form the clouds that trap the heat and cook us all, but that's not necessarily the case. Once Princeton got the stones to come out and say that clouds are coolers, not heaters, and that the cooling is vastly underestimated, it started a quiet storm of publications worldwide on the topic, with some studies finding such poppycock in the previous pollution and cloud story that this is the headline we see. Rethinking as in, oops, we got it backwards. Today we see the sentiments mirrored in nature. This pollution we put into the air is unhealthy and should cease for those reasons, but its effect on climate is cooling. By the way, over half of the top mainstream climate publishers from the last two decades have gotten in on this one over the last year and a half. Not a single media outlet has taken notice. Stepping back, a no-frills and no-nonsense warning for the Dead Sea. The 1995 tsunami was an appetizer. Over geologic time, this region will take horrendous waves generated by earthquakes, and this paper's entire point is that warning. Up next, we're going out with Gemini, looking to the southern sky and finding that Jupiters are the norm, if not the rule. Not only do most systems contain a Jupiter-like planet, but it is usually from 3 to 10 AU from its star. Our Jupiter is 5. Up next, we're going to Europa, Jupiter's second most interesting moon behind Ganymede. And here we are looking at aspects of its subsurface ocean. Sort of. But when you find sodium chloride, aka salt, all over the place, it begins to make scientists think its oceans are a lot more like Earth's than we previously thought. And while it was already a top three place to search for life among the Jovian and Saturnian moon systems, it just jumped to number one. Time for cosmology, where you never know how off someone's paper is going to be. This one, however, demonstrating that other papers are off. It is not quasar feedback controlling star formation in those distant galaxies. Such feedback was thought to be the number one controlling factor. But in another article debunking an idea that will help us figure out that first one, spiral galaxies for 170 years were thought to be density waves, standing. But we now have enough data to realize that the arms are coherent structures, moving together on the same plate of information, Gravity lovers dumbfounded in this article, but all it takes is recollection of the dozens of galactic field studies that have come out in recent months. The magnetic field should have told them years ago this is electromagnetic, not a standing wave. 
last stories here. An interesting simulation of Antlia 2 and its potential past collision with the Milky Way is leading scientists to now blame it for the ripples we see in the outer arms. You can see one of those ripples on the right here, allegedly kinked from the crossing. The next deep field survey is at hand. Euclid cost way too much money for its primary purpose of dark energy, which is likely the cosmic scale fields and perpetual currents, not some magical new thing. And so the Better Sky survey will report today is SRG. The German-Russian X-ray collaboration is going to be like Gaia, but for the high energy X-ray range. All of these articles are linked for you below. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.